Hi guys, so today we wanna to go through how it is to read a nutrition label. Now, I'm very proud of you for making it to day two. Thank you so much for showing up again. It is um, an honor that you have come here and that you are taking the time out of your lives to uh, come here and get some more information about our nutrition labels and sugar and everything else. And um, I am honored and I'm very grateful that you are taking the time out because I know that life is busy. So we're gonna get straight onto it today. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go by the Australian rules because we most of us are Australian. So the law requires all manufactured food to uh, have a contain a label carrying uh, safety and nutritional information. Okay, so on the label that you'll see, it will um, have the product, um, describing as accurately as what it can, as what it is. It will have the brand name, uh, the ingredients that it contains, um, nutritional information, energy, fat, protein, sugar, salt, those types of things. Uh, how the percentage, so how much of each ingredient is in the products, um, the use by date, the best before, uh, the details of the manufacturer, how much it weighs, uh, information for people with allergies, gluten-free, nut-free, blah, 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 those types of things, uh, a list of the food additives, uh, directions for use and storage, and the country of where the food is produced. So that is what you're gonna kind of find on your product. So from here, we, it's interesting to start to learn to understand some nutritional claims that you are going to be seeing on the products. Some labels are going to, they're going to tell you the percentage of what is recommended for the intake per serve um, of one product. So it's gonna help you work out what, so this will tell you what's a balance thing. Now it's really important to look at what the, when you're looking at the back panel, what the serving size is. Because let's use cereal for example, lots of us are pouring cereal and uh, their serving size and to what we're pouring is completely different. And so there, so you, we might look at the calorie, we might look at the calories on the back and think, oh that's great. Um, it's low calorie food, but then you are actually using that the double the amount of serving. Uh, it's interesting even if you look at alcohol, like there was a example of a, um, an alcohol and I saw it advertised and it said per serve. And it was like, it was like claiming that this um, can, I think it was like a mojito, or was it wasn't mojito, it was a, martini like a what's the espresso martini there we go found it so it was that and it was per serve and it was saying it was only 99 calories per serve but when you looked that little can was actually two two serves so it's looking at that stuff because it's um the inf it's not lying but it's it does there to confuse you so um it's it's confuses you and we think we're doing the right things, but we're actually, you know, so the cereal, so that's why it's really good to start to look and measure food out, weigh it out. When I first started uh, really understanding my food and understanding portions and all of that stuff, especially with sugar, I weighed, I, I had to weigh stuff out and I, I don't do it anymore, um, but I, because I generally know, I still do it sometimes if I'm um, needing to wind my neck in a little bit or if I'm, doing something new, or I just wanna just recheck on something, I will still measure it out. But it's just, it's such it's such an eye opener when you really start to measure your food and look at how much you've got of stuff, how much a serving actually is. Sometimes it's quite it's quite shocking as to um, to what a serve is. But then other t the other thing that I've really learned on my journey is when I started actually looking at the serving size, what the serve was, Cereal is a big one or, you know, muesli, if you have like yogurt and muesli and all that nice little stuff, um, even if it's low sugar and all of those things, uh, when I actually ate serving size, I was I was satisfied. And so there was lots of times that my um, eyes were bigger than my belly, you know, and I was, um, you know, just, I would eat it and I would eat it because it was there. But when I actually ate the serving size, I was quite satisfied. So that is some of the nutrition claims that you'll have in a label, and I am gonna go through that in a bit more detail after. But you will also see uh, some other things on the front 
of the product. So it might say low fat, low GI. There was such a long time that everybody, I know growing up for me, everybody, everything was on low fat and I would just pick up low fat food thinking that that was the best thing for me when actually they've replaced the low, they've taken the fat out and they've replaced it with lots of sugar. So yep, it might be low fat, but it's really high in sugar. I used to, um, years and years ago when I was about, I was 16, 17, I used to have iced coffees. I'm from Adelaide and I used to have Farmers Union iced coffees. I love them and I actually used to have them um, as a, sometimes if I was hungry and I didn't have enough time to you know, eat or was going out, I would just go, oh, just have a farmer's union and iced coffee, that will fill me up. And it was 54 grams of sugar per the serve. So even here uh, or wherever you are, if you look around, if you like the iced coffees or any of those things, check the back. The sugar amount will um, shock you. So uh, yeah, so that is a, um, it's an eye opener. Um, the other thing is to understand that just because the, there is these claims on the front of the product, it doesn't mean it's healthy. So just try to understand the difference between this stuff and marketing. Okay, so as you see in the picture here, this is a nutrition information panel that you will see on most of your foods. Okay, so I want you to be looking at this and we're going to go over it. So it's generally going to tell you the standard serving size of the product and what the nutrients are that are contained per serving. And you can use this label to compare the product with other things um, on similar packaged foods. So the thing that you are going to see in the, uh, the first one you're going to see is energy. Okay, so a kilojoule is used is a measure of energy and to lose weight, you need to eat and drink fewer kilojoules than what you're using. So kilojoules uh, as uh, calories, okay? So you should limit your intake of uh, junk food and all of those things that have, so they say we don't wanna eat the thing that has more kilojoules per serve. So you will see the energy is the top one. So you can um, just use your phone to convert kilojoules to calories, okay? So this is that whole calories in versus calories out. Okay, next you, we are gonna see protein. Okay, so we're gonna look at, so this packet that we've got here is 16 per serve and per per one serve you are going to have 2.8 grams of protein um, from this packet that's if you are having a serve and again if we look at the top the serving size is 30 grams okay next we're going to go on to fat so we're going to see on here there's the there's fat then there's total fats and then there's saturated fats so saturated fats are what we kind of want to eat the least amount of. So they are linked to increased risk of heart disease, high blood cholesterol. So it's important to choose for foods that are lower in saturated fats. Um, so there could be other names for ingredients that are high in the saturated fats, as you'll see in the corner. So it's animal fat, uh, beef fat, butter, chocolate, milk, solids, coconut, uh, kofa, cream, ghee, you know, all of those things, palm oil, sour cream. So they're uh, ingredients that would be quite high in saturated fat. So it is recommended for less than three grams per 100 gram is what is recommended in the fats. Okay, so next we are coming down. So yeah, so with fat, sorry, you generally want to choose foods with less than 10 grams of fat per 100 grams. Uh, and But again, you're looking at, if you were following your macros, you would be looking at balancing it out according to where they were. Um, so as an example, um, you know, cheeses can be high in fats. So they're recommending to choose less than 15 grams per 100 grams. And for milk, um, yogurt, ice cream, you want to choose to less than two grams. So uh, it's just a guide. We don't need to be exact, but this is what the guidelines are giving us, the Australian National Guidelines. Okay, so next we are going to look at carbohydrates. So they're going to give us the total of carbohydrates and then how much of that is coming from sugar. 
The carbohydrates, they're found in all fruits and vegetables, breads, grain products, and then there's also sugar and lots of sugary foods. But we need carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are important and we don't want to cut them out. We just want to reduce, I guess, the amount of sugar that is from the carbohydrate. So you're going to see uh, sugar is the type of is a type of carbohydrate, and we want to choose the sugar is obviously also named um, under quite a lot of different things. So you'll see here we've as we've been learning, or you'll see, um, you know, sugar can be also uh, called dextrose, fructose, glucose, golden syrup, honey, maple syrup, sucrose, malt, maltose, lactose, brown sugar, caster sugar, maple sugar, raw sugar, sucrose. So sometimes on these panels, you will see they have sugar and then so that it doesn't look so bad, they trick you. So then they'll um, add the sugars differently on the, on the way down under different names. That is tricky. You know, it's they're just tricksters on us. So um, yeah, so we want to we want to be really aware of the other names and read the nutritional panel the whole way through. I've been caught out with that before. That I just looked at the sugars and I didn't continue to look down. And then they had you know fructose, dextrose. You know, they had an, a couple of other names for sugar. So then there was more sugar than what I thought in a product. So we don't need to completely avoid sugar. We just want to avoid large amounts of added sugar. If you see the contents per 100 grams, so this is the second column that we're looking in, is more than 15 grams, then you maybe want to look for an alternative of that product. Okay. Um, And then again, check down the panel for those other names because they are there to trick us and to... um, try to to sell us the product. Um, So foods, so um, fiber is really important in our diet. You can find fiber in whole grain bread and cereals. They improve digestion and they help keep you full, which really, really important. Not all labels include the fiber, um, but it is something to start to pay attention to. And you wanna make sure that they have more than three grams or more per, per serve. Next, we are working our way down. So we are going to look at sodium or salt. So we want to choose lower salt options. So, you know, for for our health. So salt again has other names. So baking powder, celery salt, garlic salt. So they, you could look at the ingredients and the list and they could, they could name these things multiple times. So it's something to be aware of. Uh, onion salt, rock salt, sodium bicarbonate, uh, you know, sea salt, stock cubes, vegetable salt, all of those things. There are other names for high salt ingredients. So we want to choose the lower sodium options. Um, food with less than 400 milligrams per 100 grams are good and uh, less than 120 milligrams would be, be would be optimal. You want to make sure when you are trying to compare um, similar products, You want to be making sure that you're looking at the column that has the nutrients per the 100 grams because then you're kind of comparing the same thing instead of comparing it to the serving size. So we want to try to things that are, we we don't, you know, we want to look for the lower in sugar and sodium, um, you know, again, and if generally we are looking for a higher protein, um, again, it all depends on your goal as to what the rule is. Okay, next we're going to come down to the ingredients list. And I find this really, really important. So we want to look at the ingredients list. And so when you find a product that has lots and lots and lots of ingredients, we, you know, you've got to kind of put your alarm bells up. (laughs) So this one here says cereals, uh, 76%. So so there's 76% of that is cereals. Uh, then it's got some husk is 11% and then there's sugar, rice, malt, extract, honey, salt and vitamins. Okay, so the, the amount that um, is listed from the greatest to the smallest and um, you want to make sure that the first three ingredients uh, aren't really high in saturated fats as sodium or sugar. Okay, because that's what's going to overtake most of the product. Again, the less ingredients. And if you see one with all these numbers and all these other things, um, you know, it could be different additives and all that. You, you probably want to stay away from it. 
um, or start to look for an alternative. You know, like you can look at the back and there's things that I've seen, they say, um, you know, they might say uh, a potato chip. So they might say sweet potato chips if we're in the looking down the chip aisle. And, you know, then you look at the back and the first ingredient is oil. <laughs> you know, it's not even potato. Um, I always look at, you know, my kids eat chicken nuggets well they eat chicken tenders because that if you look at the back of what a chicken nugget is you know it's only 34 percent chicken and that's like what you know what's the rest what's the other 70 odd percent of that it's junk so I'm really conscious of when I'm buying and the ingredients and we want to look at you know obviously the less ingredients the better next I want to talk about the health star rating this is my opinion and I'm just going to tell you my opinion and when you have you make an informed choice on what you believe yourself. So there are lots of products that are claimed to be really healthy and it can be quite a shock as to they'll get a five star rating but they might be like full of sugar or full of this. So if you are going and buying something from the shop and you were just looking at this and using this health star rating whether you go oh this got five stars I'm going to buy that because it's got five stars, I really uh, encourage you to flip it over to the back and to look at the back of the panel and to understand what the panel is saying. I wouldn't use that rating as to um, decide, give you the deciding um, choice as to whether you buy that product or not. So because there are lots of things, as I will show you, that are labeled as healthy or given five stars where they're actually I don't even know they, where they where they um, get the rating from. Okay, so they are designed to help you compare similar packaged products, um, but I wouldn't use that to I wouldn't use that panel to make a choice. To be honest, I don't look at it at all. I look at the back and I understand the back of my label before I understand the uh, energy, the five star rating that they've got. And I really hope that it is something that they um, they either improve on or they get rid of because I, I don't, I don't, I think people are making these choices because they're based on this rating and oh, it's got a five star rating, but this is what, you're not gonna be that person. There are some things that are five star and they should be five star, but there's other things that have a high rating and they shouldn't be too. But, uh, but we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna understand this panel on the back and you're gonna really understand where the decisions have been made for on this product. Okay, next we're going to go on to, you know, there's two types of drinks. So, you know, the comparing the sugar in this this time. So you'll see this uh, Zupa Dupa raspberry flavoured milk drink. It's got six teaspoons of added sugar. That's getting a four star rating. It's obviously got the colouring in and the sugar flavouring. And then we are going to look at the um, you know full cream milk here, and that's got zero teaspoons of added sugar. But again, it's got the same rating. So, how how does that work out? You would you would drink that Zupa Dupa drink, and it's sick. Or give it to your kids, and it's six teaspoons of added sugar. That's that's more than the daily allowance, especially for a child. Okay, next we're going to look at these two yogurts. Now we're only just comparing the difference between the, the five star rating. I'm not saying one is better than the other or worse than the other, but it's just trying to understand where this label comes from. So the first yogurt you're gonna see is classed as a health food. Um, it's got five stars, so somebody might look at that and pick that up. Um, but look, it's got all these, uh, look at all the ingredients on there. And then we are going to look at the Greek style Coles brand yogurt that only has one and a half star rating and it only has three ingredients. So, you know, it's, it's confusing. So look at this butter. They are classing the Flora Proactive, uh, giving a four and a half star rating. When we look at all the ingredients, there's water, vegetable oils, you know, so many ingredients in that. And then they're classing this um, just Australian butter, Coles brand, with cream, water and salt with three ingredients, and that gets half a star. So where does that, how does that align? 
Okay, next we're going to look at this one, which has a muesli bar, which has got four teaspoons of sugar per 100 grams. Um, and then that's given a four and a half star rating. And then we are looking at the Woolworths brand cheese and crackers. They've got zero sugar per 100 grams and they're only get a 0.5. So again, this label is very misleading, so please don't only judge it by that. So next I wanna talk about how they try to trick us or um, through the front of the packet. So the front of the packet is um, what are some of the things that people are drawn to. When we don't understand that back of the panel enough, we will look at the front of the panel and we will look at the front of a product and think, this is really healthy. So look, so when I, when I go shopping, I look through everything. I look at the, I, I'll always turn it around and look at the back and I encourage you to do the same thing. So, but when we, there are things that different products do in order to sell us. We see um, the, the thing that people see all the time and especially as protein is a bit of the buzzword, we see high protein and they think to buy it or you buy it in the health section or they, you'll see protein, protein. When you actually look at the back and you look at the protein per serve, I'm like, there's hardly any protein at all. And I will try to find more examples of that for you. But there's lots of things like that that they use to market to us so that you buy the product. So remember, everything in the store, they're trying to sell it to us, all right? But we aren't gonna be caught up with the marketing. We are gonna buy something that we want to and make an informed choice on that because we're gonna understand uh, what products have got enough of this and sugar and everything else in it. We're gonna understand that and we're gonna make an informed choice when we buy something from the supermarket. Okay, so we are going to look here at, um, this is like rice wheels. So it's just something that we're just going to look at the marketing of this. When we look at the front of the package, it really makes them sound great. So it's got, you know, that they are less fat, uh, keep the kids happy, um, it fits in the lunchbox. You know, what does it say? 65% less fat, gluten-free. Um, you know, we are thinking that this is amazing here. Um, it's got a lunchbox friendly, you know, all of those things that they put, um, they putting on the top. And we're thinking, this is great. You know, so, um, you know, they're nice bright colors. It's got that it's got less fat on it. Um, you know, people thinking, again, this is that old way of thinking uh, that we, we, you know, need the less fat, the better when actually we need fat. Um, so then it says air pops, not fried. So, you know, all of this stuff, gluten free um, and it's, you know, appealing to your children. So it's all of these stuff that we're reading and that it makes it sound really great. But when we flip it over and you actually look at the ingredients, there is lots of different ingredients, you know, uh, you know, there's seasoning and there's sugar, dextrose, sh sugar, yeast extract, milk, solids, vegetable powder. Um, you know, there is different, uh, where's the cheese one? There is um, different additives and all them that are not great for us. And um, so, you know, we would, we would look at these things and think this is, this is the best thing to buy. But when you actually see, you know, so there's glutamine, so that's yeast extract um, and hydrolyzed vegetable protein. There's different flavors. There's just different flavors added that again are not great for us. Um, they then say, you know, like again, the front said that it was natural flavors, I think, I'm just reading down again. And, um, you know, they've, they've created a different mix of, um, you know, there's a mix of ingredients. So what's actually natural? And so it makes it confusing as to what in the, and there is a, there is a flavoring in these ones that is actually, it's, um, that is in these that is actually known to cause behavioral problems in children. So parents would be look would look at the front of this product and think it's really, really healthy and a great choice for their kids when, you know, we always want to look at the back of the packet and understand these are the things that they're doing for marketing. The same, we're going to look at these Cheerios. So they're saying that they're whole grain, um, you know, there's no artificial colors or flavors. It's a natural source of fiber. So we're gonna look at that, um, you know, so it's got four whole grains, corn, wheat, oats, and rice. And, um, you know, so it's got the, is it four, four star rating? So we're thinking, again, this is an amazing product. 
But again, when we look over the back, you'll see, you know, there's sugar, honey, sunflower oil, salt blend, so salt, mineral, sea salts, there's color and anatode. So that is the flavoring that is classed as, they've seen it as, it's, they class, it's classed as natural, but it actually is like, gives it the kind of the yellowy color that is in things. And it is um, really known to cause a lot of behavioral problems in children and in adults. Um, and, you know, so again, they, they're using this, we've just got to be aware of what's the marketing behind these products and what they're trying to, um, they're trying to sell it to us. Okay, so again, always flip it over so you can understand the back of a, pa of a packet. So whatever lifestyle you are looking to have, whether we're looking to reduce sugar, cut out sugar, um, you know, whatever, whatever lifestyle you're looking to have, you need to really understand the nutrition label and what the product is trying to tell you. Remember, don't always just go by the front or go by that front panel, flip it over to the back and look at the back. We want to be able to understand that so that we can make an informed choice. When you're comparing one product to the other, we want to look at the per 100 grams. So then we know, look at the serving size and what is the serving size and actually get home and measure it. And then you'll see. Uh, check for extra ingredients that, they're, that they've added in down the bottom. Sugar for one thing is called many different names and it can be on the nutritional panel multiple times. When we're looking at what pro what food is in a product, you want to make sure that you are looking um, the the first three things. We don't want it to have sugar or salt or any of these things because that's what's going to be really high in. So understand those things first uh, and and check all those things, and then you'll know that you're you're making a good choice in what you're choosing.